Hello and welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast. My name is Amy Roper and I am the host of the Women's Wellness Podcast, where our goal is to empower women to make informed decisions about their health, life and family. Today, we have got Kim Knight from the Emotional Alchemy Academy, who is going to join us to talk about emotions and why they matter. So Kim is what is known as an emotional health detective and what she does is she helps her clients figure out hidden stresses, traumas, and emotions that have triggered physical illnesses in their life. And she helps a lot of clients overcome conditions such as chronic fatigue or chronic pain conditions. So we're just scratching the surface today. We are going to be talking about why emotions matter and how they relate to our health and our physical being. So welcome, Kim. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Hi. (laughs) (laughs) So what I thought I would get into first, so I've been listening to your podcast a little bit, The Kiwi Health Detective, and just so people understand a little bit about you, how did you get into emotional academy emotional alchemy i should say so what happened was to cut a very long story short was i went on a very long journey of about 20 years of having a lot of problems um health problems and when i say health that that you know that includes physical and mental and initially i had depression (laughs) excuse me, and anxiety, and then I got chronic fatigue, and then I had a whole heap of other chronic conditions, you know, allergies and asthma and back, chronic ongoing back problems and lots of different things. And that set me on a very long journey to find out what's causing it. Because I just, I, I just knew that I didn't want to just take medication. I knew that was just a plaster. And I... I wanted to find out what's causing it and clear it. And, and so that, that took me on a very long journey, which I won't go into now. <laughs> um, but the turning point, you know, even, even after many, many years, I, you know, and, I, and making bits of progress, I, I, I still wasn't really getting, you know, the, the real answers. And then I had what I call my light bulb moment. And my light bulb moment was understanding the incredible, enormous impact that trapped emotional energy, or we could say unresolved emotional hurts, have on the physical body to create physical symptoms. By the way, you've got, I don't, there's some noise coming through from something rubbing against your... Probably my scarf. Like that one. Yeah. I'll choke myself Just a little bit. You might want to know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah, I had no idea that that holding emotions inside me, although, of course, this was totally unconscious. I mean, who who's going to, you know, consciously do that? But unconsciously holding unresolved emotional pain inside was creating all these physical symptoms. So whether we and mental, whether we call it depression, chronic fatigue, chronic back pain, allergies, asthma, you name it, doesn't matter what it was, it was all connected to unresolved emotional pain. And that was a light bulb moment and a turning point. And from that moment on, which was in 2000, um, so nearly 20 years ago now, yeah. <laughs> I dedicated myself to really learning about emotions. And learning what are they, where are they, where do they come from, what are all the multitude of reasons that we, you know, create and hold on to these emotional pains, you know, consciously, unconsciously, this lifetime, other lifetimes, you know, all all sorts of research and doing lots and lots of training in many, many different modalities which specialize in emotional healing. And... Finally, a year ago, you know, even after, you know, working for 13 years with with clients and it's all about emotions to to heal their physical illness. Finally, last year, thinking to myself, you know what? People always ask me, what do you call yourself? And it's like, oh, well, you know, health detective, life coach, health coach, personal development coach. It's like I could give myself, you know, 20 different titles and none of them really completely fit. And 
And I thought, well, you know, everything I do is emotions. It's, it all somehow keys back to emotions. Mm. Uh, because, you know, if we have unresolved emotions, that creates stress. It creates physical symptoms. It creates mental, you know, um, disturbance. It, it all ties in. And so that's when I founded the Emotional Alchemy Academy, which is a seven step or seven levels of learning to really master emotions. And there's a lot to mastering emotions. There's many different levels. Uh, and that's why I've split it up into seven levels <laughs> because then it's, it's, yeah. it's sort of sized areas, even though each area is a big chunk in itself. Yeah. I imagine it's massive because like you said, a lot of people think emotions are to do with our mental health and we break it down into depression or I'm feeling tired or, I'm feeling sad or happy, but it's something that we don't really consider beyond those superficial emotions, really. Um, so, ooh, trying to think of my next question. I've got so many written down. <laughs> <laughs> so really, they start from such an early age. So it's those hidden traumas that could go back to something that happened at school when you were seven years old, for example? Oh, they start even before that. Oh, right. The thing is, oh, right. you know, up to the age of between birth and seven, we are an emotional, energetic being. Our intellect doesn't really start developing until we're about seven. So we're mainly responding emotionally and energetically. And that is automatic. Right. It's, a, it's an automatic inbuilt response. So it's automatic to respond with, I feel sad, I feel upset, I feel happy, whatever, that, that, that's automatic. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, for mo if we grow up in a family, which is the norm these, <coughs> these days, where if there isn't emotional literacy, if you like, in the family, and if we have upsetting traumatic events, then we the, the the negative inverted commas because negative just means it's a sort of like an alarm bell you know it's not it's nothing wrong it's nothing bad right. but we'll respond with anger or sadness or loneliness or fear or whatever the negative emotion is and if that energy because emotions are a form of energy everything is energy if that energy is not cleared and dissipated and transformed which is why it's called alchemy because alchemy is the process of transforming mm -hmm. if that emotional energy is not dissipated in a healthy constructive way it stays in the body because energy and the physical law says that energy cannot be destroyed once it's created energy can be transformed but it can't be destroyed or just disappear yeah it just moves so, from one matter to another <clears throat> yeah yeah so most people unbeknownst to themselves are storing this emotional energy inside of them and it's just building up and building up and building up until it starts to manifest as symptoms of some sort so for example depression is actually the depressing the unconscious depressing of emotions so depression is not an emotion it's actually an act of depressing emotions Right, And that is why we experience the depression is because we're holding all this energy in and it takes a lot of energy to hold the energy down, like holding a basketball under water. And, that, and we don't just depress the, the bad, you know, inverted commas, negative energy, you know, the unhappy energy. We're depressing all the good stuff too. Everything gets depressed. And that's why we feel so depressed. So... You know, we, we, we develop these unconscious patterns of suppressing emotions from an, a very early age. And then we take those unconscious patterns into our teenage years and our adulthood. Mm -hmm. um, but then we don't even know what we don't know. And we don't know what we're doing and not doing. And we're just quite unconscious. So the interesting thing is, it actually doesn't take a lot of change to recognize the truth of all of this it just takes the right information and it also takes the readiness to hear it 
Uh, if you're not ready to hear it, it doesn't matter. I could talk for hours and it's just going to go straight over the top of somebody's head. But if they're suddenly ready to hear it, it's like whoomph and they have that light bulb moment and then everything can start to change. Mm. Yeah, I'm just thinking, I don't want to go down this path so much, but I'm thinking in relation to, say, domestic violence and those things when it's a pattern or with smacking children and you go, well, this is what happened when I was growing up, so this is what carries on. Like the dad does the same as the granddad does the yeah. granddad. So yeah, down that's how family. it works until it gets stopped. Until there's yeah. something that makes you wake up and go, hang on, that's not right. And you do, you kind of just wake up from it with this yeah. epiphany. It's it's weird yeah. sensation, isn't it? Yeah. And then it's then I guess is that what you help with then is helping them to realize that epiphany, realize that waking up moments and building through it and coming out the other side? Yeah, a lot of what I do it is about awareness. Like one of the major keys to healing is becoming aware of what one was previously unaware of because then you have new choices. So I do two things really, is that I help people have information that they didn't have before, you know, that they didn't see before. It might've been right in front of their nose, but there was nobody there to tell them it. Yeah. Um, to, to give these new perspectives and understanding. And so that's what I call the theory side of things, because that is really important. Mm. But then people need actual strategies <coughs> you know to make the change you need tools and strategies so I give people a toolbox and I teach people how to do it for themselves I don't do it I don't do anything for people I don't heal people I don't fix people nobody can do that because all change and all healing comes from within nobody can yeah. heal anybody else um, so uh, you know people can help other people heal themselves but healing happens within so my, you know, what excites me and one of my taglines is self-care, a revolution in healthcare, because we are in a society which for the last, I don't know how many years has had this belief that something or someone outside of you is going to heal you or fix you, which leaves us very disempowered because if it's something or someone outside of us, then there's not much we can do and we don't have control. Mm. Whereas once we know that our body is a self-healing machine and a self-healing mechanism and that we need to play a part in it and take control, then we have so much more control and that is re-empowerment. And so all of, you know, everything that I do is about re-empowering women to take back control over their life. Yes. Yes. It was like, preach hallelujah that was amazing <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it just makes so much sense that it's like from a personal trainer perspective I will get people to come and see me and they will want exercise and want all the plans in the world and I can give them a whole range of exercises but if they don't do it it's you can only put down so much it's whether they're going to pick it up and use it and how they see it relating to them and then that's only how it works isn't it yeah, Understand. yeah. so this is a change it's like we're moving from you know a disempowered model to a re-empowerment model mm. uh, and, and that's just how it has to be and in the greatest scheme of men evolving men women evolving themselves this has to be, um, you know, because a lot of my work is to do with, it's not just about health, it's to do with personal development and mm -hmm. also spiritual development and, and, um, and development and evolution of one's consciousness. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and this is, you know, on a bigger worldwide scale, so to speak, this is, uh, you know, something that's happening on a, on a grander scale um in you know to the human population mm. uh, and it's always happening we're always evolving you know we don't stay the same no 
but we're not just evolving our you know physical bodies and our minds we're evolving our spiritual selves as well and and the more one evolves oneself spiritually towards self-realization the more um the more self-responsibility one has to take you you can't evolve yourself spiritually without taking more self-responsibility yes so moving on to a question that I've written down, how do we start that process? How do we start to acknowledge those deeper emotions? Is there anything that the women listening to this could take away and try? Yeah. Um, well, a couple of things somewhere on my website, I've got like a free, uh, a, a free little training program that, that something, something yes. along the lines of the five steps to emotional awareness or something uh, like that. That website, which, I'll pop it in the show notes. Is that Kim Knight's Art of Health? No. No, that's that's, that's, oh, my, that's your Facebook that's page. Facebook. Your Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. What was your website again, sorry? It's emotionalalchemyacademy.com. That was it. The other one I wrote down but didn't write .com. <laughs> So somewhere on there, there is a free, um, you know, uh, little mini training. But the crux of that training is that we have to start becoming aware of what we're feeling and then we need to acknowledge it and accept it rather than push it away because most people are unconsciously trying to avoid their feelings if they're unpleasant feelings because they don't know how to process it and because when they were a child growing up, they weren't given the support to process it and so they came to believe that there was something wrong about having those feelings and then they actually made themselves wrong for having those feelings so we have to start to understand that just like a battery has a positive and a negative and there's no good or bad of either side of that battery there are no good inverted commas bad inverted commas emotions there's just unpleasant or pleasant feeling emotions and that's how it's meant to be because the unpleasant ones are meant to bring our attention to the fact that something needs to be taken notice of and changed. Yeah. So we have to start becoming aware of what we're truly feeling and acknowledge the truth of how we're feeling and express how we feel to other people, you know, because most people don't because they're afraid they're going to be judged or criticized or even punished, you know, mm. or whatever. So we have to become more emotionally literate, more emotionally aware. Um, more you know emotionally intelligent and that is all in the level one foundation training is all about that it's like how do I become more emotionally savvy and understand the, the true purpose of emotions which is to give us feedback emotions are not bad they're not good they, they're just there to give us feedback yeah they're just our internal compass they are points. they are and you go, okay, yep. that feels bad. I'll move over here. And who said well, we it? Before we just move, we need, to, we need to actually do something about that energy as well. Right. We have to know how to self-process it rather than just turn it, you know, in another direction. So that's that yes. maybe part of it, turning it in another direction, but we also need to manage the emotions. What, what ways do people tend to stifle the emotion, the the negative ones when they come up. Is it avoidance or is it more self medication? Is there a are there oh there'll be lots of that people can look out for? <laughs> yeah, good question. Um, well, the thing, is, the problem is we're not aware of what we're not aware of, right? So yeah. until we start becoming aware by putting more attention on it and consciously deciding I want to address this. Mm. Up until that point, we'll be largely unaware of what we're even doing with our feelings, right? Yeah. Uh, unless we're already very emotionally lit literate. But if we're talking about the people who are not so emotionally aware, then they'll A, be unconsciously suppressing, but it will show up with things like, say, comfort eating, very mm -hmm. common. Uh, it could be drinking. Smoking, which is an emotional smoke screen. If somebody's smoking, you know, you've got signs straight away. Drugs. Um, we can't say that medication is, is doing that because medication is trying to deal with some symptoms. But, yeah. you know, um, indirectly, then there may be emotions there. Um, 
anything you know uh, work working hard workaholism so any aholism you know or, or habit type thing uh, even over exercising is a way to you know deal with emotions um, overworking uh, shopping <laughs> anything to distract ourselves from being still and feeling the truth of how we're feeling that's a that last statement, just say that again. That was really powerful, that last statement. <laughs> Anything from being still to distract ourselves from what we're really feeling. Yeah. So of course, most people, you know, they've they just got to keep busy, 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 which is part of our, you know, 21st century life. But it's actually way out of balance. People just, you know, they don't want to be still. Uh, they find it difficult to meditate or do qigong or whatever. Yeah. Um, just want to keep you know stimulated so people who are sort of like uh, what do they call them extreme sports enthusiasts and bungee jumpers and yes you know jet boat me. riders or whatever <laughs> it's like i've got to got to got to get that next fix yeah yeah um oh i lost it um a lot of a lot of people who i work with are mums and talking list thinking about them for a second because currently this week we're talking about self-care with a group of ladies. Is there a lot of guilt surrounding women and mums in particular who feel like they have to do it all and they don't have time to rest and take time for themselves and acknowledge themselves? They're always the, the carer and looking after the kids or the husband or the partner or whatever. Yeah, so it's interesting because <laughs> I'm laughing because if we could screen share, I would show you exactly the program that I'm teaching at the moment, which has got a huge section on self-care, including <laughs> how to deal with guilt. Yeah. Um, and if I look back over my journey and my recovery, um, if I could name one thing that is absolutely paramount for good health, you know, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, it's self-care. And there are many, many different aspects to self-care, but it's an absolute must do. Um, and it can take people quite a long time as it did for me to actually understand the importance and the necessity of self-care because I was so used to pushing myself, you know, type A personality, um, you know, always with these, these expectations of I'm not doing good enough, whatever I do isn't good enough. I have to push harder but when I tracked back and really delved into well why do I have these patterns of you know whatever I do isn't good enough and I just have to work harder and longer and whatever it was all due to unmet emotional needs from childhood mm -hmm. and all the women that I've worked with you know with chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia and these you know chronic health conditions irritable bowel syndrome just you know very typical chronic health conditions at the, at the root of it all for every single one and i mean every single one is self-worth issues self-value issues um right. lack of desirability guilt blah de blah uh and that's that's not to minimize <laughs> yes yeah. you know it's it's all the same it's all the same and also very much having been disempowered somehow in childhood uh and be, therefore there's this feeling usually quite unconscious of feeling disempowered or powerless as an adult even we might be a very able capable person but underneath underneath the mask if you like our feelings of I'm not good enough so we have to we have to sort that if we really want to deal with things at a root cause level which is what I'm interested in doing then we have to we have to address those issues yeah I'm thinking of a a couple of people who I might have to send your way. How would people get in touch with you if they want to work with you? Do you work online or just in person? Well, actually, for the past few years, everything is online. And at the moment, currently, as we speak right now, I'm not seeing anyone one to one. Everything is uh, through online programs. Mm -hmm. And that's either D DIY programs or group coaching programs. I suppose there are a lot of people who are you can kind of almost group people into certain groupings yeah oh yeah same recurring themes yep. yeah very very common which is why you know you, you 
it's like everybody will have different manifestations of their problems, different symptoms, but if you drill down to the root of it, it's all the same. And so the solution is the same, but people need, you know, a bit more of A and a bit less of B solution and vice versa, you know. Yeah. Everybody's going to find what they need for themselves, but within the online programs, for example, they're going to find what they need. Yes. And is there a community as well they can help support each other? along with that or is it all something else yeah yeah <laughs> well it's the online community within each program at the moment um okay. i i don't have a facebook communicate community per se at the moment i just haven't been able to stretch to that you know yet yeah that's it though but it's working within within your area you know what trying to word it being aware of your own space and what you can manage yeah that's right about self-care yeah. as well and looking after yourself there's no point in pushing and trying to do everything yeah it is it is all about what's right at the right time yeah yeah, yeah. and that goes back to people trying to do everything and trying to be everywhere and being everything to everyone yeah and on the topic of guilt you know, one of the things that I really learned is that there are two types of guilt, and I know that I've got a free video on YouTube about this, is that I came to see that there are two main types of guilt. One is what I call real guilt, and one is false guilt. The real guilt is when we've done something wrong. We know we've done something wrong because we feel really uncomfortable in our heart. You know, we get that sort of mm. yucky, uncomfortable feeling. For example, if you were if you just sort of fly off the handle at somebody or you're rude to them or, you know, you, you know that you weren't nice, you weren't kind, and you know that you need to apologise. Mm -hmm. And so the solution for real guilt is to apologise. And that guilt is, again, a feedback from the body, from the heart, actually, saying it was not okay to behave that way to another human being and you need to make amends. And until you make amends, I'm not going to stop sending this feeling of, you know, discomfort and guilt. And that is exactly as it should be. Otherwise, how would we know when we, you know, there's no other barometer, you know, for, no. for when we, you know, overstep the, the boundaries. The other guilt is the false guilt, which is when we haven't done something wrong, or but we feel bad, we feel guilty. Now, 95 percent of the time at least it's false guilt that people feel uh, and, it, and it all goes back to you know I don't deserve I'm not good enough you know these core unconscious beliefs that we have inside of us mm. and therefore we feel guilty when we put ourselves first etc etc so I have a whole program on how to how to put yourself first and how to say no without feeling guilty and you know because it's such a I mean the, the only reason I created that program was because through working one-on-one -on -one with clients, you know, thousands of sessions, seeing the same thing, repeating itself, you know? Yeah. Women putting up with unfair treatment, abusive relationships, bullying, afraid to speak their truth, et cetera, et cetera, and not realizing that it could be different. And then once you know that, wow, actually, there's another way, we have other choices, there are other ways of dealing with this that actually free you, then everything turns around yes right how would people when is your next course so i think this podcast will be going out in the new year so when would your next course be coming up for people to sign up for something i don't know what the new year schedule is right. uh, exactly um as we speak right now because i've already rolled out live the first four levels of the seven levels of the academy trainings mm -hmm and they sort of get done in rotation and i'm about to do level five which is the chronic illness recovery program yeah. and so potentially in the new year it will be the um more the mind mastery uh, stuff and changing patterns of consciousness which mm -hmm. is about changing all the limiting sort of habits that we have more at a mental level yeah. Uh, that that yeah. that that drive our <coughs> excuse me drive our behaviours that then lead to results that we don't want because our beliefs drive our behaviours which drive our results. 
Fantastic. So we're coming to the end of the podcast now. So I just want to double check. Um, is there anything that I have missed or anything else that you wanted to add today before we sign off? No, I don't think you've missed anything. I've enjoyed our conversation. And I just think that the most important thing is to become aware of what, you know, one's currently unaware of, which takes the desire to want to do that, mm. uh, whatever that is, because there are so many different aspects to ourself, you know, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I, I see that it's important to have a desire to want to change oneself and grow oneself. And often that will come with pain. It, it will come because we, we you know, the, the pain drove us to want to change. And yeah. that's often how it works. And to know that things can get better if, you know, currently things are difficult and to never give up. Uh, one of my favorite quotes from the Dalai Lama is, is something like, never, ever, 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 ever give up. <laughs> <Something like> <laughs> um, because this, you know, working on ourselves is not easy and it's not an overnight fix. And that's also a really important thing to actually unlearn is that, you know dealing with our issues is not an overnight fix because we're very conditioned by the current conventional system to think that within two days of taking a pill all your problems will have gone away and that is not actually addressing the problem at all no well that said it can take a long time to get into that situation yeah. so it's yeah. natural that it's going to take a long time to come out of it yeah exactly yeah well perfect yeah. well that is all the questions I have. Thank you very much for joining me today. I really, really appreciate the time you took to talk to us. Um, I will pop any details about your course in the show notes. So if anyone wants to get in touch, they can. And yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amy.